And in other situations, you can choose not to make the first move in order to give Cove the space to be the one to act afterwards. Overall, Cove can get romantic, but the player's agency will take priority. High initiative includes everything, everything MIDI does, but it also means the player agency will be reduced to a degree in favor of having Cove give fictional affection even more frequently and with less prompting. Instead of all the major affecting affection giving situations being led by a choice menu from you to decide on, some will instead be replaced by Cove acting automatically. This level is only recommended if you're very comfortable with physical affection. Heck yes! And we prefer to simply see it happen rather than always holding the reins on it. I feel like just because of Cove's, just because it's Cove, I actually prefer I actually prefer the other person being taking more of the initiative romantically. That's just me personally. I naturally am a touchy-feely person, but I really, really love it when the other person just naturally is just affectionate. Like, you know, so... And given Cope's personality, him being able to get to a point where he's so comfortable with himself and with Fawn that he just automatically has high initiative, I would love that. I would actually find that really attractive, really hot and really attractive. Um, and I'm very comfortable with physical interaction and affection. However, this level is mostly relevant if Cove ends up as your official boyfriend at some point. Situations where, where high-level initiative makes a difference tend to come up in scenes that are exclusive to being in a relationship. The parts that are also included in the middle initiative will be seen whether you're dating or not. Once you pick your level, it can't be changed later, so keep your full playthrough in mind when deciding. We hope you enjoy whichever initiative option you decide on. I'm going high initiative. You know, go big or go home. When it comes to initiative with Cove, go big or go home. High. Let's go this high. High initiative. The start of classes ended the relaxed three days of summer. It didn't take long for you to get back into the swing of the school year routine. Schedules and homework became the new normal. Derek wasn't around nearly as much. Boo! With school and after-school activities, there weren't many opportunities for him to take the trip out to your neighborhood. Sometimes he'd hear that he was at a training camp or something like that, but you weren't always sure what he was up to. See, I was trying, I was trying to be optimistic that we would still be able to spend a lot of time with Derek. But you still kept in touch over the phone as best you could. You kind of lost contact this time. No, 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 no. Still kept in touch with that awesomely cute and adorable and super sweet and super polite boy. Still kept in touch with touch over the phone as best you could. Thank you for giving us that choice. The Jeremy kid did disappear after the summer and no one ever heard from him again. Where he went or what he might be up to was a mystery. I've been told by many of you who have been written in the comments that Jeremy does appear as a character in another game made by these same people. Um, in addition to Shiloh, Shiloh and Jeremy appear in another game. So that is something that's really cool to know. You saw more of Miranda around. Since you had hung out with her on her birthday, she had opened up to you. The two of you talked regularly. She was the same towards Cove. After a while, all three of you developed a real friendship together. More summers came and went like the waves on the shore coming in and out. In your second year of high school, someone new started to visit Sunset Bird, a sunny girl named Terry Brooke. She was a friend of Cove, made due to them being both being ocean obsessed. Terry was more than glad to be to befriend you too. Someone close to Cove had to be good company, she felt. You were pleased to get along with her as well. Funnily enough, Terry was also extremely tight with Miranda, who had who had she had known for even longer than Cove. The four of you were able to create a small friend circle. As for your home life, the Angels also had developments. Changing laws and public perception countrywide made it possible for your moms to openly wear their wedding rings without questions. Nice! This is cool that they actually put in like real-life historical things into this game. Though they had a wedding years ago, it was only recently that the union was officially recognized everywhere in the US. That was a good day, to say the least. That's pretty cool. I love that they added that into the story. Elizabeth came into her own and stopped being quite as irritable. Thank the maker. She no longer worried about perceived childishness, and she grew up for real. I can't wait to interact with her, that, if that's the case. She didn't even be mind called, being called Lizzie again, although most people used Liz. She eventually graduated high school and moved out to attend college in another state. 
It was a lot for you to adjust to your older sister being gone. Liz never let you forget her role in your life, though, and kept in touch. Cove's relationship with his family improved over the years. Kyra visited several times after that summer, and things became easier between the two. He was also closer with his dad than ever before. You knew they talked even more, and that helped prevent a lot of friction before it could start. And Cove only continued to open up, to his parents and the rest of the world. He was so bright, he shone. He would willingly join conversations, make jokes, and put in an effort not to use over-blunt phrasing. Despite Cove's bookish preferences when he had been younger, his interests had shifted. No longer were the days where he'd spent all day curled up inside. No more, no, now more and more of his time went into athletic activities, which is pretty darn hot. Things had shifted between you and Cove. Ooh, matured affection, I love that. Things had shifted between you and Cove, but in a way that most couldn't see. After all this time, he wasn't just your neighbor. He wasn't only your friend or even a guy you were interested in. You were in love with him. You loved Cove. You knew that fact for certain. There was no one else who you held those feelings for. It was strange looking back to on it all. The future faded into your present, and then it was simply the past. Even the most fundamental parts of your life couldn't last forever. You felt that the most pointedly that you felt that the most pointedly the day you inevitably graduated high school. It was over, and you would not be going back ever again. From now on, what came next was your choice. You would be directing your own life. There was what that was where you were currently. That was where you were currently, the summer after school had ended. The first summer of true freedom. What used to be a reprieve from the typical was now going to be your first step into adulthood. Nice. One fine summer morning, you took in what had become a very special scene. The whole family having a meal together. Oh wow, Liz has changed a lot. Your big sister Liz still hadn't lived at home full time for a couple years, but she arrived last week to spend the season here since it was an off semester for her. She wanted to make sure she was in town because you had now also graduated high school, so who knew how much rarer these moments would become in the future. You watched on as Liz laughed good-naturedly over a comment Mom made. Her Elizabeth-only mindset had only been a phase. Nearly any nickname was welcomed at this point in her life. Strangely, even though she'd moved away, you'd lately felt closer to her than you had in a long time. Sometimes that happens, actually. You idly scooped up more of your breakfast and chewed absentmindedly. You were a vegetarian. No. If you're a vegetarian, more power to you. I... I can't be a vegetarian. You are a vegan? No. But I do like vegans. If I was to have a specialty diet, it would be pescatarian because I can I can give up red meat. I can give up land meat. Seafood, however, that would be a tougher sell. I would be able to ma I would be able to give up like beef, chicken, pork if I still could have shrimp, scallops, fish, crab, all those things. So yeah, a politarian. I actually don't know what a politarian is. I'm gonna have to look that up. You are a picky eater. No, 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 no. You generally ate whatever. Yeah, I generally ate whatever. And the meal you had reflected that. It included just about everything your mom's may have made, though you often made your own food nowadays. With Liz around, though, your parents made even more options than usual. Your sister had been vegetarian for a while, and they wanted to make sure she had choices too. Oh, wow. Conversation, conversation had gone on idly without you fully taking in the words until your ears were peaked when Ma started on a bit of town gossip. Uh-huh. And so that's how I heard the news. All right, all right. Now stop burying the, the lead and tell us. What is this so-called news? Ma giggled as she cast a look across the table, satisfied she had everyone's attention. Well, it turns out the Donalds won't be renting out the condo up the street as per Sunset Bird tradition for the first time in what must be nearly two decades. A chorus of gasps and shocked expressions were had, we had, were had all around after the initial shock of your eyebrows. After the initial shock, your eyebrows pinched. Ma may consider them by name, but you and Liz always viewed them exclusively as the mean old couple who would yell at anyone under 25 who crossed their paths. Your ma continued on with the story, spreading strawberry jam over a piece of toast as she did so. They've decided not to make big trips anymore. Friends and family will be visiting them at their home. Hmm. 
Hmm, that's nice for them then. Have a good summer, meet grandparents with no grandkids away from us. That's a relief. It's kind of sad they can't travel anymore. I hope they're still okay even if they're mean. My thoughts exactly Liz. Finally, they can pee off. You didn't have to comment on that development. Yeah, I mean, it's... I'm, I'm at that point where... If I can help it, I try. If I can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all, so I'll try. Quite often, I'll speak my mind. When I'm playing game, video games, for example, I'll speak my mind. But in public... It depends. It depends on the situation, whether or not I'm brutally honest. So, I'm just gonna say you didn't have anything to comment on that development. Be nice, Liz. You don't want to end up like them, do you? You and your sister cracked smiles at the joke. Well? At least they won't be here to yell at my children anymore. Lonnie. Lonnie. And that blunt comment got laughter from all three of you. Engrossed in conversation once more, you continued to chat with your family until the meal was over. Step three, third time's charm. Nice. As it went, once the food was eaten, the cleanup had been done, Liz took the role of washing the dishes and passed them to you for drying and putting away. You had set up cups in front of you that needed to go on the top shelf of the cabinet. It was effortless to do. You were very tall. The task was pretty straightforward for you. You were tall. You had to stretch, but it was doable. You were an average height. It was a struggle to get them up without a stepping stool. A stepping stool was mandatory for you. Okay. So, compared to the average Filipino, I'm pretty tall. But, in terms of the American standard, I would, I would say I'm just above average height, I would say. So I'm going to say I'm tall, but not really tall. That was simply your lot in life. You'd always been vertically gifted. You felt great about how things were. You hoped you might still grow more. You wished you had stopped growing earlier. You didn't think about it much. You didn't even know what to think about it. Um, I didn't even really think about it much. That was a struggle for you because you remember how you used to feel so con about how you used to feel so content about it when you were younger. Liz shook you out of your internal musing by starting off an impromptu conversation. She seemed to be voicing the thoughts that had been buzzing around in her own head. I have to say, going back for another semester this fall is pretty intimidating. You'd think after the first year or two I'd have a handle on things, but no. You stole a glance at her, still passing cups in the proper, up in the proper place. I guess it's only fair. My first round was pretty general classes, and your one of my architecture major was the basics. <sighs> now it feels serious. I have to actually know some things. The laugh she gave was flippantly airy, but the way she scrub, scrubbed at the plates held more force than necessary. I know you can handle it. I think it's really cool you want to be an architect. That does sound hard. You simply shrugged. You merely listened to her venting. I like to think that by this point, see, my brother and I, we definitely argued and fought and bickered when we were kids. But now that we're older, I'd like to think that we are, we have a much better relationship and get along a lot better. So I'd like to imagine that my relationship with Liz is a lot better than it had been in the past. So I think, I think it's really cool you want to be an architect. Don't be too impressed yet. Wait to see if it actually happens. But thanks. You're welcome. The older sister's mouth quirked into a small smile. It'll be fine, one way or another. Oh. Oh, but I'm not trying to scare you away from college, if that's even your plan. What is going on with that anyway? You had a solid plan set for a long time. That, I always have a plan, so that feels like what it would be for me. You, had, you came to a firm conclusion recently. You had a great kind of general idea. You had absolutely no idea. You hadn't even let yourself think about it. It was too much. Yeah, no. I was... I'm very much, uh... Get my life together. Get my life planned. That's very much my jam. I had a solid plan set for a long time. You answered the question as much as you were able and willing to. Liz's smile grew more reassuring as you did. Hmm, you made it through 12 years of full-time education already. You can make your ideas happen, I'm sure. So this is just before college. So I have to think... What was I like right after I graduated from my senior year in high school and I'm about to start college? I still didn't have like everything together back then. I still don't have it now, everything together. But I'd like to think that I was definitely better off than I was in middle school. Sometimes it still felt hard to believe your public schooling experience was over in the end. Now this is interesting because I actually did not go to the public school system 
at least through K through K through eighth grade. I was in Catholic school, private Catholic school, and I actually I actually enjoyed it. I know that not everybody has good experiences with private schools, especially religious private schools. My husband, Colin, went to a private Catholic high school, and it was not. He wasn't overly like. It wasn't the best experience for him, but I had a generally very positive experience through middle school and elementary school. Um, so, yeah, sometimes it's so. I'm, 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 I guess they. That's not one of the things you could choose. You can choose how tall you are. You can choose what foods you have, but you can't choose whether or not you did public schooling or private schooling. You had graduated at the top of your class, you soared through with high marks, you had to work extremely hard but were rewarded with great grades, you had been an average graduate, you struggled to reach the benchmark, you made it, you didn't try hard but you made it regardless. I mean, what does this mean at the top of your class? I was in the top 10 or 15% of my class, which is huge considering how my school was a science and tech school. So there were like geniuses left and right. So the fact that I at least was in the top 10 or 15%, I think I was in the top 10%. I'd like to think, um, compared to the average, puts me pretty high up there. Now, was I the valedictorian or the salutatorian? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I held my own. So, I mean, it's either soared through with high marks or graduated at the top of your class. I'd like to think just in terms of, in general, I was, I think, since I was in the top 10% of my class, I'd like to consider that being within the top of my class, within 10%, that's pretty good. One out of 10 students, you know. So I'll say we graduated the top of your class, and you were going to miss it, and you felt satisfied leaving off there, and you were just glad it was truly behind you. I'm gonna say I'm gonna miss it, because definitely that, Definitely, it's like college was a whole nother ball game. High school was, college was definitely a bit more challenging than high school. I was gonna miss it. It had been a familiar and fulfilling part of your life. Liz picked up on the silence her question ended up creating. She decided it was time to make a closing statement on the topic. You're a good boy. You're a good boy, Vaughn. Do what's best for you and we'll be here to back it up. Thanks, Liz. At that, Liz happily passed the final dish your way. She waved a soapy soap hand as a farewell and moved on to her next task for the cleanup job. You were focused on getting the last pieces put back where they belonged. You eventually moved on to a new chore, but that was interrupted by the sound of your cell phone. It was the phone's default ringtone. You had used a silly novelty song as a ringtone. That sounds more like me, especially at this age. You'd set one of your most beloved songs as your ringtone. I wasn't really that into music in high school. I didn't really get into music until college, honestly. The phone was just set to vibrate. Now, I had a silly novelty song as a ringtone. That was more my thing. I was that kid. So I, when I was in college, AOL Instant Messenger, that was the big thing. This was before Facebook. This was be way before Twitter or Instagram. This was, yeah, I know, pre-Facebook, man. AOL Instant Messenger was the big thing while I was in college, and I was that guy. I'm sure I annoyed the heck out of my roommates who added those custom tones whenever somebody messages you. And it was, I was big into Pokemon. I mean, I'm still into Pokemon, but I definitely was big into Pokemon. And it was always like a Pikachu sound. Pikachu, every time somebody messaged, messaged me. Or if somebody like messaged me while I was away, it was like, Pika, like it was different versions of Pikachu speaking, which I'm sure annoyed the snot out of my roommate. So that's the only way, reason why I would say I used the silly novelty song as a ringtone. You casually picked it up from the table where he had placed it earlier. The phone was a couple years old at this point, having been a 16th birthday gift from your parents. They decided which model to get, but you got to pick the color. It was orange, 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 orange. Thank you, my favorite color. But these are all other cool colors. Rose gold. Ooh, rose gold. Beautiful. Gold. Yeah, definitely orange. My phone, even today, is orange. And it was just a phone. You didn't do anything to decorate it. And it had a special charm attached to it. I mean, back in the day, this was before 
smartphones. And I'm assuming this is also before smartphones, I think. So I didn't really, I'm not the kind of person who likes to decorate their devices, really. Except for one exception, I will change, I have one of those really cool stickers you put in the front of your Apple computers to make the glowing Apple, you know, in the front of the Apple laptops, they've got that glowing Apple, but you can put like a sticker on it to make it look like something else. That's like the one exception. But other than that, I typically don't like decorating the vast majority of my personal things. Like definitely not with stickers or anything like that. It's just not, not really my thing. It was just a phone. You didn't do anything to decorate it. The screen lit up as you gave the little device a swipe with one finger. You were informed by caller ID that it was Lee. You weren't surprised. Despite having busier and busier lives and not living in the same town, you still had a good relationship with your cousin of the same age. I'm glad to hear that. I really like Lee. Especially once the miracle of the both of you having your own phones actually happened. She got hers first, though. Tapping at the accept button, you answer her call. A familiar, bubbly voice came through right after. Hi! Oh, I guess it is more like we're- we are in smartphone territory. Okay, maybe it was a okay, well I'm not used to- I'm not used to, like, having smartphones at that age. I didn't really get a smartphone until... Honestly, it was after college, yeah. Not until a few years after- because the iPhone had not come out yet. The iPhone wasn't really a thing until after college, so... Yeah, and then the droid, again, wasn't a thing until several years. My first phone was a droid. So, yeah, that's that. <sighs> I just dated myself. Hey, Vaughn. Hiya. I trust I'm not interrupting anything major. Wow, Lee is pretty. Look at her. She's gorgeous. Only some cleaning around the house. Oh, then you're welcome for my call. Oh, then you're welcome for my call. A distraction from that must have, from that must have been desperately needed. Yeah, thank you, my dear cousin. Hey, I love doing chores, you joked. I like cleaning, you protested earnestly. It's good to hear from you. Even though she couldn't see it, you shook her head at that. Um, I'm gonna say it's good to hear from you. Right? Right? She giggled and you could hear the, the jangling of the jewelry she must be wearing. Nothing amazing is happening for me either. I'm bored and felt like chatting. My morning shift ended, so I'm free for the rest of the day. Woo! That's good. You're off from your part-time job today. You hadn't started working anywhere yet, so you couldn't relate. Yeah, so here's the thing, like... I feel like I could have gotten a job um, while I was at school, while I was still, you know, a student, but my parents purposely, um, purposely wanted me to focus as much as possible on A, um, focus on my school, and B, focus on really enjoying being a kid, like enjoying not having to work, enjoying not having to worry about the responsibility of work because the way that my parents like uh, mentality was you have all the rest of your life to work you have all the rest of your life to like worry about you know schlogging over a job um and so they made sure that i got everything that i needed financially and if i needed something on top of that i had not really an allowance like they they basically gave me my own credit card when I was in high school and they just said you know just basically did they just said use it as you need it but don't abuse it you know so I didn't go off like spending nilly-nilly but if you know my friends went out to eat somewhere for lunch uh, or if we wanted to go to the movies you know, or if I was going to a birthday party and I needed to buy somebody a birthday present, nothing extra, nothing like super extravagant, you know, I could use the credit card. And of course my parents monitored my spending with it. They monitored what I used my credit card for and I never really, they never really like said anything to me about how I was spending, how I was using my credit card. So anything that I really needed financially, I just used my credit card and I guess I just never abused it. And so, I, I didn't really need an allowance per se because my parents just provided me with really everything that I needed with, you know, reasonable amount of spending cash to do fun things and just enjoy, just enjoy being a kid or enjoy being a teenager. Um, and I understand that's not everybody's, I understand that's not everybody's situation. So I wasn't saying that to brag. I was just explaining, I was just explaining 
what it was like for me growing up. And so I say this because um, I never got a job. I didn't start working really until after I graduated college because my parents wanted to make sure that I focused on school and kept my grades up and they didn't want a job to interfere with my school and my studies and my grades, which I agree with. And I know a lot of people could make the argument, oh, but like getting a job in your high school helps you like know about responsibility and helps you organize your time and et cetera, et cetera. But I already knew how to do that. Like I, as as a, just growing up, I I guess I was one of those lucky people or maybe it's just one of, it's just part of my personality that I already like knew how to organize my time. I already knew like how to commit to something. I already knew how to, you know, balance my schedule and, you know, how to be responsible. Like I already knew that. I didn't necessarily need a job to teach me how to do it. I just already had it. And so there really wasn't a benefit for me to get a job, really. So I just never worked, um, again, until I graduated from college and got my degree in software engineering, and then I started working. Um, so I think for me, I was, I'd like to consider myself really lucky because it was just that perfect combination of parents who, you know, gave me what I needed, plus a little bit for fun. Um, and they, they discouraged me. I mean, they didn't dis... They didn't tell me I couldn't get a job, but they basically tried to make it a point to make it that I didn't really need a job. Um, and so I didn't get a job. And, uh, you know, I naturally, like, was able to jump into the workforce. You know, I don't think there would have been any advantage for me to get a job. You know, it would have probably been a disadvantage for me because, honestly, I, I am glad I had the chance before I graduated college to just enjoy myself, just to enjoy my high school life, just enjoy my college life and just have fun, but also work hard, you know, in school. That's that's the whole thing. It's like you play, you work hard and you play hard. That's always how I've been. And that's always really how our parents treated us as kids and trusted us. And so I, I get that that's not everybody's situation and maybe you are not lucky enough to be in that comfortable of a situation but that's how it was for me so this that is the long-winded way to answer why i hadn't really started working anywhere yet so i couldn't relate unlike you lit had started dipping her toes in the workforce as of late it made keeping in touch frequently even more complicated but you both managed what about you it's been pretty normal cool cool that's you then so how's mr cove holden doing there was a teasing bent on to her tone. I'd, I'd like to know about that too. How is Mr. Cole Holding do, doing? She was never willing to let up on what was going on between the two of you. But that name was incredibly familiar to your ears. Cove, your next door neighbor from the past decade at this point. But he was far more than just someone who lived in the same street. You vividly remembered the summer day you expressed feelings for each other as little 13 year olds. You started officially dating years ago. You only got together officially, officially recently. Now this is a good, now this is an interesting question because I'd like to believe if I was comfortable with my sexuality and if it was, if my parents were very supportive about my sexuality while I was in high school, I could see myself wanting to date Cove. But in reality, that's not what happened. But in this game, my parents were super supportive. So it's like, do I go with what actually happened in real life? Or do I go with how things worked out in this game? And I think I might go with what how things work out in this game because that just to me is more interesting. It's just more believable. So I feel like I'd like to believe that all of my... what The, the thing I've been getting is not only have my parents and even Cove's parents have been supportive of my, my sexuality and probably Cove's sexuality. They also have been pretty like supportive and, if, and accepting of the fact that we like each other romantically. So I don't see why um, it would not, I don't see why we wouldn't have been dating years ago. So I'll say we started officially dating years ago and you were in love with him, but that was one thing you hadn't admitted yet. And you were in love with him, but you didn't want to talk about that at this point in your life. 